Hello. Welcome to Notes from the Engine Room. Uh, this is a video episode of my uh, blog that I keep on my website. Uh, I talk about things that are interesting to me, surprising, fascinating, uh, and things I'd like to share with other people because I think they might like them too. Uh, I occasionally use it to uh, share things that I've learned, things that everybody can learn, and uh, you never stop learning. And it's also helpful to be reminded of things that you're supposed to have known. Um, this particular episode, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the fundamentals of stereo recording. Um, a few of the most useful methods, um, and uh, if it's successful, we may go on and do another one where there are some of the lesser known um, methods for stereo recording, some of which require more than two microphones. Um, but we'll see how this one goes first. What we are going to be covering uh, are some of the fundamental techniques for capturing a room or a large ensemble. Um, the ones we're going to cover uh, this week are uh, the coincident pair, sometimes referred to as the XY. The near coincident pair uh, works very similarly, uh, but like the name implies, uh, they're separated by a little bit of space. And uh, the angle uh, of the patterns is a little different and gives you a little bit more um, opportunity, functional opportunity to adjust it for the width of what you want. It's one of my favorites. Uh, the third we're going to use is uh, the spaced pair or spaced omni. Sometimes they're uh, called. If you divided up the room into thirds, for example, you would have a good starting point would be to have each one of the microphones on the third lines. Um, and the way that that works is uh, not so much about the directionality of the microphones, but that because they're spaced far enough apart, if there is a sound coming from the left side of the room, the sound is going to hit the left microphone before it's going to hit the right microphone. And so uh, the time difference is primarily what gives you the stereo image as opposed to the energy level difference, which is how it works with directional mics. Uh, the last uh, technique that we're going to cover today um, is not as common um, as the first three, um, but I wanted to include it because it does include uh, another microphone pattern, uh, and it's called the bloom line pair. It sounds like some sort of German clothing or something. But uh, the idea being that you use two figure eight microphones at 90 degrees to each other, uh, and you essentially get a stereo image in front of the microphones and the inverse stereo image behind the microphones. And you'll see that when we demonstrate it. So uh, enough about the different kinds. Let's go ahead and get started. There are a number of things. Uh, I'd like to show you, and once again, um, please share back. I look forward to hearing your ideas about this topic and um, what you think of it. So we're going to start with uh, the coincident pair or the XY. Here we go. Okay, uh, for those of you who are curious, um, let's start by just showing you the rig that we're going to be recording through. The two 414s are set up in the traditional XY pair. Uh, 
they are set with the two diaphragms as close together as possible. In this case, it's sort of one on top of the other. They're set at 90 degrees. Um, I have this fancy stereo bar that I can use to uh, calibrate angles. But when push comes to shove, uh, any kind of box or piece of paper will, ver will verify that this is 90 degrees. Uh, the microphones are set to a uh, fairly loose cardioid pattern. So if you can see, uh, it's that cardioid. It's sort of the one in the middle. We may do two passes, one with that cardioid and one with uh, more of the hypercardioid to sort of hear the difference. Um, they are set up, let's make sure that's level. And um, set up basically to capture the whole room. I'm going to use um, the drum set uh, as our source uh, for sound. Uh, first of all, it, I happen to have one here. And second of all, it will get the whole room ringing. So you, you, you really do get the feel of how these microphones are capturing uh, the stereo essence of the whole room, not just of the instrument. Yeah, give that out of touch. And when recording in stereo, um, or stereo mic uh, per se, the, the the precision really does pay off. The XY stereo coincident pair sounds like in this glorious room. Coincident pair okay. in this room. We're going to move on um, to our next setup. This is the uh, near coincident pair, uh, also sometimes called the ORTF. Is a, it, the angles are really a, a variation, somewhere anywhere between 90 and 115 degrees. Um, 110 is about where I like it. Sometimes 100. Um, and I'll show you, uh, let me see if I can get this so you can really see it. I don't know if the iPad will focus that well, but, um, you can see that these uh, things will allow me to rotate very precisely. So I'm going to set this at, I think, 100 degrees. So that's 50 degrees on either microphone. Fifty. Okay, so now the important thing to realize is that uh, it looks like it's backwards, but that's primarily because of the way that we're doing uh, the side address microphones. Um, I wanted to lay these microphones on the side because uh, it's easier to understand what's going on with the pattern. As I will show you. 
Father's Day. So before the microphones were right on top of one another, and you could see that the pattern was one was pointing this way and one was pointing this way. It, that's still happening, but now the pattern is this. Still on the cardioid, and the sound is coming into this. So instead of having uh, the diaphragms right on top of one another, they are spaced by a goodly amount in this case. Um, and we'll demonstrate what the differences are with this setup versus uh, the near coincident pair for the XY. For the bloom line setup, um, it's just going to be a lot easier to do with two stands. That was predictable. A bit of a goof. Okay. Where's this fellow? Um, as you can see, uh, this microphone is pointing this way, this microphone is pointing this way, uh, and the backs that way, that way. So let's take a look and make sure that we're lined up here. I can't really see that on camera. The two diaphragms being... Uh, 90 degrees to one another. So if you can imagine, it really is an X in the middle of the room, and it's picking up forward and backward. So there you go. I'll uh, move the camera a little off center so that the get a slightly better shot of the mics while they're doing their thing for the drums. Okay, let's hear what this sounds like. set up. Get a dolly badly. So there you can see uh, the both microphones are going to be set to Omni and they're spaced uh, pretty far apart. Um, I can tell you exactly here in a moment. Um, they are spread 16 feet apart. And I'm going to make sure that they're both set on Omni. So let's do one more little drumming pass and get an idea of what the spaced Omnis are all about.
Well, hey, folks. Thanks for joining the uh, inaugural episode of Notes from the Engine Room in video. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed it and gained some information or got reminded of stuff you already know. Um, uh, your feedback is incredibly important to me, uh, and I would love to hear anything that you have to say. If you have uh, suggestions, um, if you have topics that you would like uh, for me to cover, um, if you have uh, a question, something that you would like to investigate, please let me know. Um, I happen to work in uh, the Taj Mahal of audio and have the ability to test all kinds of things uh, here at Manifold Recording. Um, I did, however, make one real boneheaded move uh, that I just realized, and that was uh, for each one of the uh, drum passages uh, for each different mic setup, uh, I didn't have at least one pattern that I played for each setup so that it was... Uh, I could easily put together uh, something sh demonstrating the different sounds of each setup, um, you know, sort of right next to one another so you could really uh, compare and contrast. So if you happen to notice any, uh, say, editing during the drum portions, uh, it would be for the reason of comparing and contrasting uh, the mic setups and would never be because the drum playing was terrible and I messed up. It would never be that reason. Uh, in any case, that's it from the engine room. I'm Ian. Bye.